Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Can people hear me? Okay, I'm gonna wait for some responses first. Also, if the audio is too low or something. Let's see. Oh, it's starting. Yes. Do you hear me? Nice. I'm going to refresh my page over here just so. Yes. Yes, it's working. Awesome. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Awesome. Okay, so uh, this is coming a bit. Uh, this was a bit spontaneous. So I wanted to share a bit of like my sculpting workflow essentially over here. Oh, I can hear myself. Um, let's try to fix that real quick. I'm gonna mute myself. Awesome. Okay, so uh, in the past couple of weeks, I started uploading some more videos of myself working because I didn't do that recently. And um, while I was doing that, I, I did very little editing. Like all of those videos I posted on the Blender Cloud, where we usually upload all of our current, like latest work of like everything that we're doing on the movie. Um, but it was so free form and almost like a live stream that I decided, why not just do a live stream? <laughs> then there's also a bit more interaction. You can ask questions and uh, we can go through this a bit more together. And it's not just me talking in front of a camera and working for a few hours. So um Basically, the uh, the characters that I'm working on right now on the movie Sprite Fright, uh, if you haven't seen anything on the latest Blender Open movie yet, uh, you can visit us on the Blender Cloud and check it out. Uh, we're also posting stuff on Twitter and Facebook. Um, but um, the main characters are basically almost all done, uh, at least my work on it, the sculpting and modeling work. Um, Angela Jeanette is still doing retopology, so it's going more into production focus. But um, for the animal characters, there was still some work left to do. So this, what you're currently seeing on the screen is the latest process, progress on the sculpting on the characters. So uh, also the little sprite there as a comparison. And um, yeah, uh, most of them are pretty much done. The bird is probably the most complex characters because, uh, character because of the wing. Um, then there's the little ladybug over here. This one was pretty straightforward. And uh, if you've seen the recordings I already did and posted on the Blender Cloud, I was uh, showing my uh, process on sculpting and retopologizing the snail and doing some expression tests and post tests. And uh, I also uh, worked a bit more and tested a bit more on the, on the spider and uh, the butterfly. Uh, these are also pretty straightforward. Um, but the one character kind of left, I shoved to the side and left open until I could show it live is uh, the chunky version of the snail. <laughs> um, so this is just a uh, an extra file I have of the full lineup, making, making a little turntable. And here I can compare the current progress on all of them. Um, awesome. Um, yeah, I would just say I can just jump straight in. I also have the, uh, the snail open on the side as a separate Blender file. Um, over here also the different tests. So this was the original sculpt. I did some variations of just a regular smile, chewing, uh, being scared, looking angry, uh, being held by one of the characters and looking angry. Uh, being more surprised and then just ducking down, just little tests and then just like a neutral version of the sculpt, which I could use for retopology. Um, and I'm pretty much going through the same thing for the chunky snail. So just to give a bit of an overview of um, how we're doing the workflow in the current, uh, in this movie project is um, we're basically, of course, starting from concept, but there was a, uh, a lot more back and forth between the concept artists and the 3D artists working on the characters. So uh, we're kind of going through it slowly, step by step. So usually what we do is we do we put some first like rough shapes into a 3D scene, seeing how 
uh, large the characters are in comparison with another, uh, with another, just like from simple spheres and cylinders, something super rudimentary. And then once that kind of lines up, all the characters look good in comparison to each other, uh, we go in and do a blocking. So this is what I currently have with the Chunky Snail. It's just a rough blocking from uh, like three, like two spheres. This was a cube that I subdivided and uh, some more spheres for the eyes and a cylinder over here. Just something really rough that uh, kind of matches the character. If I go over here and just switch that to an image editor, I have the concept over here. So just something that from the camera perspective looks kind of as close as possible to, um, to what we want to have in terms of the design, the appeal, just the general shapes. And that's what the blocking is for. Then uh, this gets shown to the team, to the director, and um, just kind of gets generally signed off. We may ha already see some first issues. We had that with a bunch of characters that we already so uh, saw some problems that we're going to have later on where you know, okay, if we translate this 2D design, this painting into 3D, the ears don't really match with uh, the, the hat or like it doesn't quite work. And then we can already start to kind of troubleshoot the design. And, um, and then we take it further. Like now uh, I would kind of start refining, merging objects and putting a bit more detail in here. And... Um, and just getting it pretty close to the design we see here on the left. By the way, this is a painting by uh, Vivian Lulkowski, our concept artist. Uh, she did the design on all the animal characters. So uh, this is really amazing. Uh, I really like this, uh, this design. The character is really appearing, appealing and funny. Uh, but uh, there are... We already discussed some changes. This is a bit of an outdated uh, painting. We never really did a new new version of this. Uh, I mean, if you compare this to the to the snail, you can already see that, uh, or you might already see that it got simplified a bit more. Um, we don't really have these flaps that are going off from the mouth. The shapes were a bit more simplified. And uh, just in general, if you compare it to the rest of the characters we have in the movie, I mean, I could just like, uh, if you go to the Blender Cloud, you can just check out the concepts. Um, and all of the different characters, if you look at them, their shape language is really simple. Most of them are like, if you, if you look at Rex, he's just a bucket. Like his head and his arms, they're like really simpl simplified cylinder shapes. So... Uh, what we discussed with the chunky snail is we wanted to make the shapes a bit more simple. There are too many creases, um, too many wrinkles. It's all a bit too complex for the style of the movie that we're going for. Um, so this is the main thing I want to address. Um, and then, yeah, this this is the current result. I'm just going to jump in in a moment. Uh, the shell I pretty much repurposed from... Uh, an earlier model that Angela Jeanette made. So if you go to the to the cloud, you can click on the snail and you can see this was the earliest version of the model we had originally. And even though the design completely changed, it got updated, the shell was still pretty solid. Uh, I got to just repurpose it, re like import it back into this file. And it's it's not too complex. It was mainly just like... Uh, I can imagine this was kind of sculpted from a, uh, started to be modeled from a cylinder over here, subdivided well. And then uh, if we go into, I think in wireframe mode, you can maybe see that it's really just this kind of tube just extruded inwards. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna quickly drink something. Mm. Ah, and again, if you if you just joined, if you have any questions, just leave it in the comments. I'm going to regularly check them out. But I think I'm just going to start. So first things first, um, this is the sculpting file. As a, so my sculpting work file. Uh, the naming convention would just be like snail underscore chunky dot sculpting dot blend. And in here I have all of my different, uh, like I can just do anything in here and I can just work on the sculpting. Uh, and then later on we're going to import the characters and put them further into modeling files, shading files, rigging files, and just put them into the rest of the pipeline and the workflow. Um, 
I'm going to first off just duplicate the collection over here, the snail chunky dot blocking, because I want to keep the original blocking. Uh, I like to keep it a bit organized. I'm usually not naming the op renaming the objects. I'm just renaming collections. So this would be snail chunky uh, dot sculpting like this. And then um, the order of the collections over here is useful because it's tied to the number keys on the keyboard. So you can just press one, two, three, four, and just kind of go through the different collections. And you also notice I have a little helpers collection over here. Uh, and I imported uh, the character Rex because uh, he's a nice scale comparison to the, to the snails. Uh, also for story reasons. I'm going to keep this uh, this live stream as spoiler free as possible, by the way. Um, like I'm not going to mention any story details. Uh, the only thing I want to mention for this for the chunky snail is um, usually I would go in and once I get into sculpting, I would do some ver like how you saw with a, with a regular snail. I would do some expression tests, some variations of sculpting to see how the design works in different situations. The chunky snail is only going to be visible in probably one shot. <laughs> like this angle that you see right here in the concept, this is going to see be this is going to be how you see the character in the movie. It's like kind of it's a foreground character, but it's only there for one gag. Um, so uh, I don't really have to concentrate much on him. It's uh, it's pretty straightforward. So I have these spheres. Uh, so I want to start working on this. And I want to, I mean, the, the forms over here on the main body are relatively complex. And I'm already pretty happy with how it looks like with the blocking with the three spheres. I might keep it as much like this as possible. Uh, what I would like to do is I'm just going to apply uh, the modifiers on these objects. I have a subdivision surface uh, modifier on these. Sorry. And uh, then I'm going to join them into one object. Um, so I can just select them. Um, in my case, I'm pressing J. The official shortcut is Control J. Uh, I'm using a heavily modified key map, by the way. I'm have, I pretty much have my own setup. Most of the shortcuts should be the same. The main difference is just that I have all of my shortcuts mapped to the tools over here on the side. So if I press G, R, S, T, W, escape, all of this is kind of mapped to the tools because I like to use them a lot. Uh, you can do this yourself, by the way. You can just like right click on, on them and say add shortcut uh, or assign shortcut and then it should work. You just have to do that for every mode. Um, but yeah, and now I can go into sculpt mode and you can see that uh, it has colors, all of the different separate meshes that I just joined. And that is because uh, all objects that you join automatically get a face set assigned. Uh, you can have, yeah, you can just see face sets over here. It's it's kind of a different type of masks. It's like almost like uh, ID colors. Uh, the biggest advantages of using face sets in sculpt mode is you can just point at one of them and press H and you can just isolate it. It's like, it's like pre-made selections you can make in sculpt mode and then um, uh, control the visibility a bit more, but you could also, um, uh, I'm going to keep the concept a bit more smaller to the side, by the way. Uh, I can also, what I can do is I can enable in the options auto masking by face set. So by usually if I would just go in here with grab brush and I like grab something, it just grabs everything. But if I say auto mask me, uh, auto mask everything by face sets, it's just going to move the face set that you clicked on. This is really useful. Um, uh, of course, in this case, I would just enable auto masking by topology. There's also the same options available with the Alt A Pi menu. Um, so auto masking by topology and then all the meshes that are disconnected are just going to be moved individually. This is, uh, this is really useful right now for like fine tweaking the shapes. Um, I also have a shortcut on enabling wireframes, uh, shift Z that I made myself. You can also change the opacity of the wireframes up here. And I think I'm just going to go in here and make the shapes a bit more simple. Um, I'm, I'm not worrying too much about, uh, about symmetry right now. 
Uh, I don't want the sculpts to be very symmetrical. I want it to be appealing. I want it to look like the concept. Uh, later on, once we get into retopolog, like once I want to retopologize the character, I would straighten out everything more, make it symmetrical again. Uh, but I don't want to worry about that now. As long as uh, I would use symmetry if it saves me some work. Um, but making keeping the model asymmetric makes it more appealing. So I can just use the grab brush smooth over here. Um, but this is, I mean, it's pretty much it. Um, what I could do right now is I could also go into the other objects. Uh, there's a new, if you're using the alpha version of Blender, there's like experimental features you could turn on. Um, one of them is to immediately switch between objects within sculpt mode and edit mode. So what you would usually do is you could, would just go to object mode, select a new object, go into sculpt mode. And again, if you want to go back, it's a bit tedious. Um, there's a shortcut D uh, as an experimental feature to immediately switch between objects. So I can immediately go into another object from sculpt mode and switch into the other object in sculpt mode. So uh, I've changed it to the shortcut uh, Alt Shift D, which is because I have some other shortcuts on D, but uh, that's basically it. <laughs> uh, okay, awesome. Um, I think before I merge any more objects, I would like to put a bit more definition into them. Um, I can, with loop cut, add a bit more cuts in here, just to sculpt on it a bit further. Um, yes. And with the inflate brush, I can just kind of inflate this a bit because, yeah. I mean, yeah, probably I'm just, nah, I'm just gonna, Keep it mostly like this, to be honest. Uh, but what I do want is I want a bit more of this curvature. Oh, also apply scale. Oh, okay. First, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna make the single user. Uh, they, those were sharing the same geometry, so I couldn't apply the scale. Now I can. Um, I'm, go I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just keep them as separate objects. And. Then I'm gonna, with the snake hook, I like to use this a lot um, to like kind of bend objects a little bit. Uh, I can use the snake hook brush. And if you use the rake slider, if you set it to one, uh, the geometry kind of follows the rotation of the stroke. So you can just do kind of like this. And just if, if you want to bend something in sculpt mode a little bit, like I want to do it here, like it ma so it matches the concept a bit more. I can do that directly in sculpt mode with a snake hook brush. A brush. It's a bit finicky, but uh, it works. Like this. Um, also, what I want to do is I want to split this editor again. I want to keep the, the concept over here. Um, and this one I'm going to change to a 3D viewport. I'm going to get rid of all of this stuff. Oh, I also made a pie menu to just toggle a lot of these UI elements, like the header, the sidebar, and all that stuff. I'm going to switch this one to the camera view. And just, yeah, I'm just going to keep it like that. So now I have a direct comparison over here to the side. Um, yes. Uh, I'm also uh, sometimes just checking out the chat to see if anything's going on. But <laughs> I see some other people also starting to manage that. It's amazing ans answering questions. Uh, yes. Oh, also I'm gonna get the header back over here and also disable the gizmos because I don't want that to block my view. I want to just see the model over here. Awesome. So I'm gonna just nudge this a bit more. So mainly I'm just get it, trying to get the, the same shapes as with the concept, pretty much. <laughs> okay, um, I'm already pretty happy with this. Uh, what about these guys? Yeah, 
this is also sharing, uh, it's the same geometry. If you duplicate something with Alt-D, you can, um, and you go into edit mode or sculpt mode and do changes, it happens on, this, on the other objects as well. It's really useful. Um, oh, in this case, I want to undo that. <laughs> uh, yep. Awesome. Uh, what I want to do is I want to make these guys single user as again. I have like a, a shortcut on you, which is just makes single user. You can find that up, up here as well in relations. Make single user, object and data. Thank you. Because I want to get these eye shapes a bit more going. So first of all, I'm going to parent the little eye dots. These are all separate objects, by the way. I'm going to parent these to the eyes. I want him to look a bit more to the side. This is also just a sphere. I just made it from all very simple objects. Um, and then I can just, with a grab brush, get a bit more of that eyelid shape that I want. Like he's looking a bit like that mischievous. I like that a lot. Oh. Like that. Interesting. When I press D to switch between objects, I'm also switching to the draw brush because I have the shortcut set on for the draw brush on D of a conflict going on. Yeah, that's my fault for my own key map. Uh, another thing I would like to change uh, when I look at the concept, it looks like the eyelids, the top eyelid and the bottom eyelid are completely separated. But for the normal snail, that was not the case. You could still see the connection. And I want to keep that. Uh, I want to keep this pretty much the same. So we still see a connection over here on the side. Um, like that. Uh, oh boy. Like that. And I can go into the other objects as well, do a similar thing. If I just. <laughs> really like this. Like that. And then also go. Let's go into this object. It's a really nice little new feature to show you if you, especially if you use the D shortcut to directly switch between objects within sculpt mode. You can um, have this fade inactive geometry slider on. I try to keep it pretty low uh, usually, um, but it shows you very uh, clearly what object you're currently sculpting on. Uh, I usually have it on point one or. 0.15, um, then it's not as distracting and I still get to see what object I'm sculpting on. I'm also going to turn off cavity for now um, because it's a bit distracting. Ah, that's basically it for now. Um, then, I mean, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm just going to save. And um, what I'm going to do is let's just merge these right now. There's nothing to be lost there. I'm going to merge these ones as well. Um, Actually, one thing I would do for now, maybe, is just to increase. I don't know if the if the sticks for the eyes are a bit too thin. I can keep it for now like this, but I could also just inflate them a little bit. Just a tiny bit. 
give them a bit more thickness like that uh, you can do that directly in sculpt mode with the mesh filter uh, tool which is basically like almost like uh, uh, like in a painting software where you have filters but in this case it's actually adjusting the mesh like smoothing it scaling it inflating it putting randomness on it um, anything that you want eventually it should also get texture support so you can like, put some textures on it that would be nice um, yeah kind of like this uh, awesome uh, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to start to remesh it so in this case with the shortcut shift R I can set a resolution um, because these are separate geometries I like to do that uh, just to use the voxel remesher because it just gets rid of all the intersections and merges everything. So I can just like set a pretty high resolution like that, kind of like this. Uh, I can work with this. It seems fine. Um, in the remesher options up here, I'm gonna uh, enable all of these toggles. I like to keep my, uh, all, preserve all of this when I remesh, especially the face sets. So now if I remesh this, uh, the face sets are still here, but the geometry completely changed. Oh, like this. Um, and then with the mesh filter tool, I can set this to smooth and I can just click and drag. Oh, I need to increase the strength again. And I can click and drag and smooth everything a bit and like that. But here's another thing I really like to do. Um, I know where my face sets are. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I need to fill these holes. That's something to remember with uh, remeshing, with a voxel remesher. Um, be careful if you have open geometry, it's gonna, it's not gonna work. <laughs> you need to have everything closed off as much as possible. So now I can smooth this like this. And now I'm glad I actually put a bit more in, uh, a bit more thickness on the sticks because once I start to smooth it, it's gonna lose a bit of volume. Um, basically like this, now I can sculpt on this a bit more. Um, yeah, what I want, what I was saying is um, I can just disable face sets. That's what I like to do because I know where I have my face sets. I can also just point to them and press H. And once I know where they are, I don't need to have these colors just blinding me essentially I, I i want to see what i'm working on i don't want to see the face sets all the time uh, face sets are usually something i set up once and then uh, use constantly but i just kind of know where they are i can just ignore their visibility okay so here's the thing i'm gonna move this a bit more down because i want to have this rounded flap over there that volume and with the inflate brush, I can go a bit in and make this a bit more visible. But then towards the sides, I want to smooth this out. I can just go in, I can switch to the smooth brush to increase the smoothing strength, or just do it with the smooth brush. But from other brushes, I can just do it with shift. Um, I also like to use the scrape tool, uh, the scrape brush a lot. Um, because it's, it's a very aggressive form of smoothing for me of just like flattening areas, but you can also hold control to fill in areas. So now for this crease, I can just, instead of smooth it, I can just hold control with a scrape brush and fill it in, which is actually giving a way faster and cleaner result than the smooth brush would. Uh, but sometimes it's still good to smooth a bit over it because then you, you're sure. Okay, this is already looking pretty much like the thing I want. Um, like this. Okay, and then pretty much the same thing up here, but here it's a bit more complicated, and I'm I'm wondering why. What is the best way of solving this? because it's like there's this big head shape going on and kind of like 
going in here in a crease. But that crease is like it's going down here and then there's another crease that's meeting it like a U-shape. And I would like to simplify these into one uh, because otherwise it's just too complex. So uh, I can work on this crease down here uh, on the back side first and just with uh, you go in with the draw sharp brush and like this. And just kind of get the same thing. Okay, awesome. And again, I'm I'm trying to keep the shapes really simple um, because my mental guideline right now is just the other characters that we did for the movie. Uh, they are usually just made of spheres and uh, cylinders and cubes, and like they they are really simple. Just think of up and the shape language of Carl, which is very fitting because uh, they were design uh, our characters were designed by Ricky Nierva, the uh, same uh, as a production designer, and he did the characters, uh, he designed the characters in Up, especially Carl, which is still a really interesting design. Okay. I'm going to smooth over this a bit, inflate it, smooth, inflate. I want to keep the shapes simple and clean. And inflating is also getting me these creases a bit back. Like that. And then over here on the other side, I want the same thing. I want these. I want a bit of these flaps. Like this. I still like having this crease down here, but I'm not going to do two like here, uh, but just one. And just the effect I want is with the regular snails, um, uh, it, it was more of a sharp cut over here. And I want, I, I really like this here, that it like almost looks like he's standing in a puddle. Uh, but the puddle is just <laughs> a bit more of his body. Um, oh yeah, the 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 concepts were done in in Krita, pretty much. Um, so at the studio, we're we're basically restricting us to just open source software, um, and just doing everything that way which means mostly working in Blender, but there's also plenty of other tools that are open software, uh, open source. But yeah, I on the back side, I can just leave it simple. Oh yeah, also another design adjustment we did on the regular snails is to make their tail more rounded. And I think for the chunky snail, that's also a really good idea. So I can just go in here with grab brush and more, make it a bit more smooth and rounded. Like that. Yes. <laughs> you can pretty much get everything done with open source. Sometimes it takes you a bit longer. Um, sometimes it's also because of our own workflow that we're imposing on ourselves, like uh, uh, doing things with... Uh, assets that you can buy because they're not open source. We're not really doing that, but we at least usually have our own asset library or like some assets that we can reuse ourselves from our movies. So everything we use is usually open source, uh, which is also great because then um, we also are completely sh free to share everything that we're doing. We can just put it online and people can not just open it up and see how it works, but also just reuse it for their own work. So I think that free environment is really valuable. I love it. Okay. Like this, I think this can fade out a bit towards the back, but I also don't care too much about the back because we are going to see the character mainly from the front.
like this. Okay, uh, another tip I say a lot, and it's I cannot stress this enough, but just to keep rotating around your model and view it from every angle. Even if this thing is only supposed to be visible from one perspective, it's still really valuable to see it from multiple angles. Um, actually, I'm going to increase the resolution now uh, just a bit. So I had it on... 0 0.0015 first. I'm going to put it up to 0 0.010. Remesh again. Um, smooth it a little bit. I'm going to bring back the volume over here with the inflate brush. Um, that's basically it. Are you able to use non-open source add-ons like Quad Remesher? Uh, usually, I mean, most add-ons are, even if they cost money, they are st they still inherit the same license as Blender. It's the GPL license. So if you make an add-on with Blender, it's, it's going to also be open source. Uh, so even though you can buy it online, there's usually also a place on uh, GitHub where you can download it. Um, it's a it's a bit weird, but that means that we can we can use those add-ons um, even though like we're trying to keep it pretty much add-on free. We're trying to use the kind of work environment that we are also offering ourselves, so people can just pretty much do the same thing we're doing from the get-go, like just from downloading Blender. Um, but uh, if the add-on is just a bridge to a closed source software, we're, we're not going to use it. So it's a bit sad. I would love to use some more uh, interesting remeshers, but um, it's, I mean, you can still work without using it. Uh, which operating system? Linux? Uh, mostly Linux. I'm also sometimes working a bit from Windows, but um, uh, that's just mostly from, like, if I'm just working from my laptop, from my own personal laptop. Most of the time it's Linux. Um, yeah. Hmm. Working under Windows. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a really great point, Pablo. That like, every, basically, like you could just go to the sp uh, to the Blender Cloud page for Spring and just download the entire repository, all the working files of Spring, and just render everything yourself. You have access to everything. Uh, that's why we call them open movies. They're like open to anyone like uh, man i think this is going to be the trickiest part like how how do i want to simplify this i'm going to try something i'm just going to Bring some volume back here with a clay strips brush. Like that. And just make this a sort of separate shape. Looks a bit bad right now, but it's getting there. Um, uh, but I think I'm also going to start to do a, another thing. I'm going to bring my face sets back because these face sets I have here, um, 
I, I don't want to use them. I can just press W, face set from visible, and it's just going to merge all of the visible ones into one. Uh, what I want to do instead, I can just go to the draw face sets brush, and I can just draw in another face set. I'm going to bring back, oh, I switched to EV accidentally. Um, I'm going to bring back uh, my overlays over here. Turn the text off. There we go. And I want to separate the body into two face sets. One for the back of the body, which has this, which is separated by this flap. And then the front part, which is also the bottom part. And uh, then eventually also the, uh, the mouth, which I'm going to add soon. And the mouth is going to be pretty high over there. Like that. And then like this. Huh. Yeah. Uh, not a lot to talk about right now with this. This. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, that's true. Uh, we can't use ZBrush. Uh, same with uh, Substance Painter or any other closed source software. Um, but I mean, ZBrush is a fine software, to be honest. Like, I don't have anything really against it. They, um, there's definitely advanta advantages in using it. Uh, I do miss some features a lot. I was I was using ZBrush uh, before I was sculpting with Blender. Um, but for my purposes, and like my, usually the style we're using using for the Blender Open Movies, Blender is just fine. Like um, a ZBrush, the biggest strength it kind of has is just going into these insane details and doing realistic uh, sculpts and just the performance. It has some really good tools that make this process a lot faster, but uh, just for more minimalistic, but also stylized uh, characters. You can basically do everything in Blender as well. Like there's nothing stopping you. And it's not like uh, ZBrush is uh, a perfect software either. If you compare, if you look at any software, there's gonna be like weird legacy issues. Blender has a lot of history. That's the interesting part. Like, um, and I think anyone who uses any software, they can, talk at length about weird things that are still in there from like 20 years past that don't make any sense anymore. Um, and something I do really love about Blender, what they did is if you think about 2.5 and 2.8, it's basically reinventing themselves. So suddenly the UI just gets completely reworked or the code underneath just gets a big cleanup and polish and just 
it's almost not the same software anymore as it was originally. There's still some underlying design philosophy that doesn't really change. Blender is always going to stay Blender to some extent. But um, it's not afraid of reinventing itself. I think one of the biggest strengths that Blender is going to have, I mean, what uh, Blender, uh, I also, what attracts a lot of people is just uh, modeling and eventually also sculpting and doing everything in Eevee in a real time render engine. And just that sort of workflow is really valuable for fast work, like just pre visualization, essentially, like a lot of concept artists are using in Blender just for that purpose, for the real-time render engine. Oh yeah, constant improvements. You you put out a bug report, it's gonna be, maybe be fixed the next day. Uh, I love that. <laughs> just the support is amazing. go I think I'm gonna oh, God damn it uh, I think I'm gonna put in a little smile over here to finally get that in here um, but also with a filter um, with a mesh filter I can pick relax face sets and then just click and drag a little bit and I get these corners kind of smoothed out um, it's a nice little feature. I like it. Um, but it could become more useful in the future, especially with integrations with other tools. Let's see. There we go. Um, okay. Uh, here's the main kind of reason why I wanted to make these face sets. I could paint in colors with uh, uh, with vertex colors. Uh, that's a totally fine thing to do. But what I like to do with the animal character so far is to just do it with material colors. Sometimes it's a bit more work, but so I can just like make three materials over here. Come on. Oh, did it freeze? Ah, render froze. Ah, there we go. Oh no, uh, okay, it unfroze, I'm gonna save. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna call the snail underside. So these are gonna be my uh, uh, three main colors. I'm gonna again disable um, uh, I mean overlays in general over here. Uh, I'm gonna hide this, go into edit mode, select everything and assign it to the uh, material for the underside. And then I can change the color over here into something that is more like what is in the concept, something more like this. Uh, yeah, a bit more like this. Yes. Uh, and then I can go again into sculpt mode, hide this, go into edit mode, assign it to the mouth. And then, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, face sets are amazing. Um, I remember when Pablo Dubarro was first suggesting the feature and talking about it, and I was just not sold. <laughs> I I barely used them in uh, in ZBrush, um, and I felt like they were kind of overrated. But now that I'm, I, uh, they were they are more integrated into all of the different features in Blender Sculpt Mode. It's so useful. It's 
uh, it's incredible. Like uh, just the ability to have multiple objects, just merge them and still be able to like go in and hide different areas and auto mask them. That alone is like, I mean, it's, it's great. But there's also more unconventional ways how you could use face sets to make your life a bit easier. Uh, like little things. When I, when I was uh, for the coffee run Blender open movie, when I was uh, working on the trees and bushes, I was using face sets. And it's uh, it just saved me work. <laughs> it just saved me time by just like painting in basically selections that are not going to go away, then smoothing their borders. And then at any point, you could just go face set, extract face set, click on one, and it's just going to like uh, get extracted as a new object with uh, thickness. Um, it's uh, it's a really fast way of managing and creating objects. Huh. So this is like the sculpting I'm doing right now is still meant to be pretty rough. I'm just trying to find the more uh, nuanced shapes, but trying to keep everything still pretty simple. Um, I don't want to go too detailed too soon. So I'm going to build up my shapes over time slowly and try to see which ones I should keep and which ones I should throw out. At any point, I could also just like switch from material colors to, I don't know, single. Um, let's see, like this, just to see my shapes a bit better uh, so that the material colors are not this like blocking everything. I can actually see what's going on. Hmm. It's true, yeah. Uh, that's actually a good point. Uh, that the snail in the concept looks a bit fatter. I think it has to do not necessarily with the volumes, but also with how rounded the creases are. I think I'm going to smooth over this a bit. Oh yeah, uh, I am going over some of these things a bit in my, uh, like on the Blender Cloud, I have a, a, a character course, a bunch of tutorials. Um, the early ones are a bit outdated, but you can still, they're, they're still useful. Uh, I made them when uh, Blender 2.80 and Blender 2.81 was released. So uh, I would love to go back to them at some point and make a bit of an update but I don't know when I can do that. <laughs> it's uh, it's going to take a while because for now I am pretty much just busy with working on the movie. There's no time. Plump it up. <laughs> the concept artist has spoken. Plump up the snail. Yes. Uh, it's also getting too... I don't know. It's It's too... The, the the shapes should be simpler. It's too anatomical. Like or it it seems too anatomical and realistic in volumes. I want this to be really rounded and simple. Um I do also have some custom medcaps. Um I, I made a I, I made my own menu to just immediately switch between them. Uh, this is an old one from 2.79. I just couldn't let go of it. Um, I added it to uh, uh, to the matcaps. You can upload and add any matcap that you want. Like it's just completely open to you. You can just go in here and uh, even paint your own matcaps in a painting software, and then just import the image. Pretty much anything is supported. Um, 
And this is one of them. I also made another, uh, another like a couple more custom ones that I'm using, uh, which is uh, this one, uh, which is basically like a little tweaked default matcap. And uh, then sometimes I'm using this one. It's not easy to look at. It's very high. It has a very high contrast. But what it does, it gives me a clear gradient between what's directly facing me, uh, what's fa not facing me anymore, and then the silhouette again. Like it's uh, for tweaking the exact shapes of your object, just getting full control over your curvature. This is super useful. It's uh, and also for working on high frequency details. Um, it just gives you a really good overview of what what your shapes look like, actually. Um, okay, but first I'm going to go back to material colors. So these like these custom menus I made, it's just like, okay, I click on material, it's gonna go in here, switch back to my main matcap, switch the color to material, and that's basically it. <laughs> It's just skipping me a couple steps. Uh, um, but I could also just go in here and just go to single, switch the matcap to anything and switch back material. And it's just my menu is just switched. Uh, yeah, saving me a couple clicks. Okay. I'm gonna just mark in very quickly where this flap is supposed to be. And I don't want to make this uh, this flap here, um, these like um, the, the separation between the belly and the back part to be really uh, pronounced like in the concept. Again, it's supposed to be simpler. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to switch back to just white. I'm gonna actually uh, let me actually just use a different matcap, this one. It's a bit easier on the eyes and I can focus um, a bit more on the general shapes. Uh, if I have this on white, like the default white matcap, it's just, uh, it's, it's hard on the eyes and I don't quite see what's going on. Uh, this is just a bit more manageable. So with the draw brush, I'm just going in. I could also just go in with a clay strips brush if I want to. And I'm just gonna separate this a bit more into two shapes. There we go. Yeah, let's see how many uh, flaps I want to have here. Um, yeah. Yeah, I should make him a bit more rounded. Like, you can really see it over here from the side. I could just push out his belly even more. I mean, the curvature over here is getting a bit extreme, but... Uh... You can always smooth it out a bit. I think the mouse should be smaller. And it's all it also needs to be higher up. 
like this. Yes. <laughs> Grab these objects over here, push them a bit forward, like this. Is it using mouse? No, I mean I'm I'm using a pen right now. Uh, if that was the question, the question, uh, generally, uh, I cannot recommend people to sculpt or paint with a mouse. Yeah, uh, sculpting with a mouse is a bit of a bad idea. It's like, I mean, learning how to draw with a with drawing with your fingers directly or something, or <laughs> I don't know, using a steering wheel. <laughs> it's very uh, unpra impractical. It's, it's, it's hindering you more than helping you. And drawing tablets are uh, pretty cheap to come by. Like you can just get a, uh, like my personal drawing tablet that I use um, is just a Wacom Intuos M. Uh, it's, a, it's a very cheap tablet. I can just connect it via Bluetooth. It's very small, but it has all the functionality I need. And like, uh, it's really interesting. Like uh, people may maybe get the impression that you're supposed to, at some point to really upgrade to a professional level, you should get a Cintiq, which has like, or like any other display tablet that has like a big display, like a huge tablet that takes up your entire desk. And then, then you can work properly. But it's actually very uncomfortable to work on a display tablet. It's very unergonomic. You need to be constantly aware of how much you're hunching down to look at your screen and uh, your posture. And you get back pain. You get, you get pain in your neck. You get pain in your arms. Uh, and you're not gaining a lot as, except for a little bit of extra precision by working on a display tablet. So, uh, yeah, a drawing tablet, a small drawing tablet is comfortable. It's just as fast to use. And for sculpting especially, uh, you probably won't need a display tablet. Like you can just get by with a super simple, super affordable, uh, normal drawing tablet and never have to upgrade. Um, yeah, doing nothing but tweaking this right now the entire time. Uh, but it's pretty much where I want it to be. Um, I think this flap down here could be more extreme at the front. So I'm just going to push this in with a draw sharp brush. And with a draw brush, uh, I can increase the volume down here so it's a bit more overlapping like that. I think that's more like what I want. Uh, towards the sides, I'm finally going to increase the volume as well, like this. And it's going to also look more like the concept art. Like that. Yeah, and I want to keep this uh, this flap over here as simple as possible. Actually, I'm thinking right now, maybe if I do another stream, I should like prepare 
a little bit of music or something. Usually when I'm working, I'm just listening to some soundtracks, any sort of like music that I can just keep in the background. And I see a lot of people when they do a live stream, they, they just play their own music. I, I really like it. I have to think about it. Otherwise, I'm just like sitting here in a, in a silent room <laughs> by myself. Well, I mean, you guys are keeping me company. <laughs> go yeah i need to um hurry up a bit more i mean this is already getting pretty far in terms of the general shapes that i want I'm relatively happy with this um and what i'm mainly doing right now is really just to nail down all of these different shapes and volumes uh which are not many like it's a it's a relatively simple design but i want it to be exact i want it to look exactly like or as close as possible as the concept or at least capture the character in the concept really it's always a bit about adapting the concept as well like if there's something that doesn't quite work you also need to be willing to make some changes um but of course any changes you do should also be approved if you're doing it in a production Mm. Yeah, I pretty much opted to keep this uh, to keep uh, a relatively complex shape on the chin. It's interesting. So I got like this big volume over here, which then gets split up in here into two smaller ones, and it's intersecting a bit with the chin over here. Like that. But that's fine. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm gonna um, later on uh, retopologize re the character so I can pass it over to Simon Thomas uh, for shading and texturing and Demet Zadik for rigging. Uh, but for now, uh, I don't have to worry too much about it. If I notice anything that should be difficult to achieve for rigging, like when I was working on the bird, uh, there were like multiple things that I was already thinking on while sculpting it that I noticed it's going to be difficult to, to rig or get right. Especially the wings, having all of those feathers, that's always a bit of a nightmare to rig. Um, but then also the beak, because it's so simplified and cartoony. How exactly is it going to rotate? How is it going to open? And uh, the neck having that simple shape of a bird, but then the bird is supposed to like rotate their heads, uh, their head like n basically 90 degrees to the side. How is that neck going to keep its volume? It's like all of these little questions um, that you can also, that you can already bring up while working on the sculpt. And then you can discuss it with the rest of the team on how we can solve the issue. And if necessary, change the design. If there's something that is really obviously not going to work in the movie, like you just look at it and it's like, okay, this is, this is too much work, it's too expensive, or we just can't get it to work within the time that we have, then it is worth to simplify the design further. Um, or maybe even do something really bold and different, like, I don't know. Uh, there were also animals that we just scratched from the movie. I mean, it wasn't because they were too complex, but because uh, they were complex and in too few shots. We had a bunny animal in the movie, in Sprite Fright, and it used to be a bit more centerpiece, and then the animatic changed, the story got updated more and more, and eventually the bunny was basically not even in the movie anymore. It was only in like one or two shots, one shot that was like dangling on the edge of being removed. And then we just decided to get rid of that character because making a bunny is 
it's m more complicated than an insect, uh, and you have, we have mostly insect animals. And uh, with a fur, it's too much work. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not worth it. So we just decided to get, get rid of that animal and uh, focus on other ones instead, make them more stand in the background, fill in the shots and the, mo the scenes in the movie that we have with something else. It happens a lot. Um, okay, okay. Um, this is pr working already pretty well. I mean, eventually I'm going to add even more resolution. Uh, you can go pretty high with the remesher. You don't have to worry about that too much. Um, uh, sometimes I'm working with millions of polygons, uh, of faces, vertices, um, just by remeshing things. Um, you can also roughly retopologize the character and then, um, then work with the multi-res modifier, which lets you go even higher in terms of poly count, but, um, I don't, uh, I don't use it often. For the purposes of these sorts of character designs, uh, you can get pretty far with just remeshing. There's also dynamic topology, which a lot of people like to use. I personally actually almost never use it anymore. I used to rely on it a lot because it was the only way of like really loosely sculpting something, but... Um, It's it's still really good for corner cases, but that's basically it. Okay, uh, I I think I did this uh, enough. Um, there's I I still got fifteen minutes l less than fifteen minutes left. Sorry if this is like was a lot of like tweaking, um, but this is like most of the work. Um, What I would then do is just like, for, for example, I would just like increase the resolution even further. Uh, like, let's just do something like this. I'm going to remesh. We're just going to lose the materials, um, uh, sadly, but the face sets are still here. So I can again, like, uh, uh, like I could, first of all, refine the face sets a bit, like paint a bit after them, and then... Uh, with the with the mesh filter tool, tool, I can relax the face sets a bit. Um, then I can hide them in edit mode, select everything, and assign it to the underside. In this case, uh, go back into sculpt mode, hide this, and assign this to the mouth. And then I have this back. I have more resolution even. Um, and I can go in this even more detailed. I can also uh, enable, oh God. Um, let's actually just like hide this. I can invert the mask, unhide everything else. And now I, now I only have this part masked off. Uh, I would also like to do, actually, I'm gonna do this, um, invert visible and then mask all of this, invert mask. Bring everything back. I can smooth the mask a little bit. And now I have everything masks off, masked off that I don't want to work on anymore, any further. And I can refine uh, this, this crease over here, this flap a bit more. Um, so I could go in more detailed. Um, eventually I would also I mean, I can show this right now. I could uh, apply the modifier over here, which is like a solidify modifier to give it to uh, to uh, give it a bit more thickness. I can apply it, and let's just select these parts over here. And in um, this is already two separate face sets. That's amazing. Uh, I can also make face sets from edit mode from the edit mode selection. So now I got a face set here as well. And if I remesh this with a fairly high resolution, let's do it, do it like this. Uh, yeah, this is really high. 
but I need this resolution. Then I can uh, keep face sets, remesh uh, with the mesh filter. I can smooth everything out a bit, a bit more, a bit more. And then I have these face sets to quickly work on separate parts if I, if I need to. And I can just keep working on this. Um, in this case, it would be nice to clean this up a bit more by like just painting over this uh, with the face sets brush. I can also isolate this. There we go. Yes. Uh, yes. Seems to be good. Pretty much. Uh, what I still would like to do is, let's try this. I want to hide this face set. And yeah, I can just grow a face set from this disconnected part over here. There we go. Now I have this nicely divided. I can hide the face sets, keep working on this. Smooth over it a bit. And now okay, I could add more detail. Could, uh, maybe I want to inflate this a bit because it's not very thick. I would like turn down the strength a bit. Uh, oh, turn the strength down even a bit more. And then inflate this a bit. Let's see how it looks in comparison to the eye. There we go. I can remesh this again. And then I could go in here and just refine the eyelids a bit more with a scrape brush like this. Be careful. Uh, you could do this in an even more uh, clean way by just uh, modeling this directly in edit mode. Uh, the like working in combination with edit mode with sculpt mode is actually a really valid workflow. And if you've ever seen the live, scri live streams of Pablo de Bauro on, on Twitch, like you like he really has this workflow and it's really good um, where he just uses uh, uses edit mode a lot. Um, but I basically have like almost five minutes, uh, a bit more than five minutes left. Uh, there's a bit of questions in here. Which shortcut to change the resolution of the with the grid? It's Shift R. Um, you can also find the resolution up here in the settings up uh, in the remesher voxel size. Uh, you can just click and drag this. Um, and... Yep. Uh, from here on out, it is really just about adding a bit more detail. Like, uh, I would just go in here, switch over to this object with, uh, with a shortcut, with a D, if you're using that experimental feature, with the switch object operator. Um, and then, yeah, I would just refine this further and detail the shape. I could go in here with this, with a crease brush um, and pinch these areas a bit. Uh, I also remeshed everything, uh, which makes it a bit more, like, a bit unclean because I increased the resolution. I can set the filter type to smooth and just smooth over everything a bit more like that. Yeah, from here, it's uh, it's just about refining it a bit. Um, maybe I'm going to do another uh, live stream where I uh, show you how to, like, I mean, this is like the asymmetric concept sculpt that I'm doing right now, but eventually we would take this further into production, and for that, it needs to be perfectly symmetric, cleaned up, open eyes, like no expression, and that is going to be retopologized. So... Um, Maybe I'm going to do that because that's also still an interesting workflow of how to clean up a sculpt for production. And uh, then maybe maybe also uh, a stream on retopology, which should be interesting. I mean, you can just let me know in the comments if you're interested in that. Um, but yes, uh, one of the comments, the crease brush. Uh, I do still really like it for polishing purposes. Like you can just go in here and because it doesn't just add or subtract, it also, it also pinches a little bit. It's really great for a little bit of cleanup, for 
um, just enhancing some of the creases and peaks. And uh, the, otherwise, I'm mostly using the draw shot brush because it gives you, it just gives you a crease. It doesn't pinch in anything. So you get actually a way cleaner stroke. Um, but just for enhancing details, making them a bit more crisp, it's usually not very useful. Um, but yeah, pretty much running out of time. Um, there's only so much I can show within a limited amount of time, but I hope this was useful. Um, and yeah, uh, that's basically it. So it's interesting to see right now the direct comparison between concept and sculpt. So I would clean up the shapes a bit more, make them a bit more crisp. I would go in more with the inflate and the draw brush and the crease brush to just make the shapes overall a bit more clear. I would maybe also change the shell a bit more so it looks more like in the concept. And apart from that, it's mostly it. Just getting rid of some of the unnecessary lumps. Um, the sharpen filter. Uh, I use it sometimes. It's a bit hard to control, but if you have like, um, bit, uh, like overall, it's a bit, um, it could use a bit of sharpening. You could go in in sculpt mode and use the filter, the mesh filter, and set it to sharpen. And what I try to do here usually is like uh, smooth it, uh, put the intensified details a bit up, and then it like just sharpens everything and smooths, uh, smooths everything else. But it's not quite reliable. Uh, it can be a good start, but after that, you should still go in uh, and polish it a bit by hand. <laughs> oh, no, this character's all lumps, but I want to get rid of the lumps. Uh, this is uh, such a tricky situation, but yes. Um, after this, I just want to would want to have the shapes a bit more clean. Um, and then basically what I would do is I would, um, if I go into the, uh, other blend file, I would update, like I can just go out of full screen in here. In this file, I have the latest sculpted versions of all the characters. I can just re-import this character and put them side by side with the others and compare and see, does this style fit? Does it look like, uh, up to like, does it look like the other characters? To, could they fit into the, into the same scene? And, um... Uh, yeah, uh, sign it up uh, uh, from the director. Everything, everyone is happy. If not, I tweak it more. Um, also, as a last little tip for the stream, uh, it, there's like with Control Spacebar, you can full screen something. What I also really love to do is Control Alt Spacebar, which is m gets rid of all the interface elements. Like it's just what you see in the viewport. And if you want to get out of it, you can just go to the top right and you can see this little button over here, click it and it puts you back out of full screen. This is really awesome if you want to do like screenshots or like show it, show something more in detail without having the interface in the way. Um, but yeah, uh, let's actually see if I can really quickly, since I have still a minute left, so I have the chunky snail over here, I can set the cursor to the position over here and I can uh, link in from the chunky snail, the collection snail chunky sculpting. There we go. I can parent it to the same empty, get rid of the other one. And there we have it. For some reason, the material colors are not there. Maybe it's because, wait, I'm going to save this, revert, also open the file again. And there we go. There we go. I'm going to full screen this. So this is the new chunky snail side by side with the rest. Uh, I hope you liked the stream. Uh, and I'll probably see you next time. <laughs> Bye.